G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to Man Cave Tuesday. Hope you all had a ripper few weeks. Right, this video is just doing a bit of a catch up. What's been going on around here in HQ? Righto, uh, let's check out the heat gun. Has anybody thought about buying one of these Ryobi um, battery operated heat guns? I've had this one for, I don't know, nearly 10 years more than likely. So it's just an Ozito. I would have paid $29, $39 back in the day. They're worth about 49 bucks now. And it has been a workhorse. It plays just fantastic, does the job. But I've been seeing these for the last couple of years. The only problem why I never bought one was that they're worth, regardless of the battery, that and those three, three things there, that's $149 to buy that. So it's very expensive, but this lives in May's shed over there. And every time I want to do something in here, whether it's trying to quickly tack off paint in cold weather or removing stickers, uh, little bits and pieces like that, I've got to go over there, grab it, bring it in here, plug it in, blah, blah, blah. And I just thought, well, that's a really handy thing. I just, you know, no cord, just grab it, use it, boom, done. So, I thought if anybody else is out there uh, that have thought the same thing, I'm going to give you a test. So, I forward to say $49, this is the way to go with the cord. But, if you want to not have the cord, um, is this a viable thing? For what I'm use, using it for, yes it is, 15 minutes out of a 5 amp hour battery, that's all I really need, not a problem. But... If you're doing some extended stuff like paint stripping a big door or something like that, no way, this ain't gonna do the job at all. That, yes. I've set up a little thing here, I'm gonna bring you over, just so that you can see. This will go to a 460 centigrade, but there's no dials to dial in, you know, to make it hotter or colder or whatever, depending on what you wanna do. There's only one fan speed, whereas this has got two fan speeds, and you've got the dial to up and down, and it'll just keep going as long as you've got power plugged in. Right, I'll bring you over. Okay, so Ozito, here we go. First, this is just a, a low fan. So there you go, you can see it's blowing it. Put it on full. Hey presto. No worries. Let's get the bloody Ryobi, and it's got a little push button. That's basically all you're getting. Oh, I have to. Not a lot of power, but you do get the heat out of it. That's now getting a bit too bloody hot. There you go. So if I was to turn this one, I think that's, which way is it, that way? That's now, that's it. Three, two, well, out. Oh. Right, so what's the verdict? Um, if I had my time over again, I most probably would not buy, buy that. It's gonna, I've, I've spent the money now, I've done it. Um, it will be useful just to be able to have that second one in here and not having to go over there and I can just pick it up and do it for the shit that I do. And of course, I've always got this one if I've got a big job that I want to do. But really, I think I'd, I'd stick with the bloody corded, the, uh, the corded ones. Unless you have a particular thing. So I've... I've Hopefully you can see that guys, I'm just doing this on the fly. So that, yeah, what that one that I've got is $149. The corded Ryobi is $85, I wouldn't buy that. Uh, I would buy that, so you get paint strippers, extra little bits and pieces, but $49, that's a bargain. And then the, uh, just the battery one is $89. If you're obviously in, if you've got Ozito batteries, well then yeah, you would go that way. But yeah, these battery operated heated guns are pretty, uh, pretty, yeah. I wouldn't say useless, they're not useless. They have a bloody, shut up, Mark. There you go, I've done me job, I've shared me bloody experience of, uh, of that. 
Cool bananas, get out of here. Rightio, let's see what Nay's up to in the wood shop. I heard her cleaning in there before. Oh, she looks like she's doing something. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? A bit of everything. A bit of everything. A bit of stuff and things. Right. So you've got a Triumph sign over there. You've got a Royal Enfield there. In you've here, got there. Farm Fresh signs there. Oh, and then a bloody Indian motorcycles. What's. Oh, so this is the one that the sticker buggered up on, isn't it? Yeah. So is that what this is? That's what this is. Yeah, sometimes these stickers, so now you cut out the whole sticker. See, I jumped ahead. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, does the auto machine cuts out the bloody sticker to put on here. But because these are a rounded surface, obviously, it makes it really tricky. Oh, that's going to make too much noise. Anyway, it's a bit of a buggery, so that's what she's doing, redoing that one. Yes. Right, oh, cool. See ya. See ya. Right, oh, here we go, guys. After the podcast, what point? F can't point drive. Oh, I can't drive. Look at that. Boom. Point oh five nine. Point oh five nine. Oh, I wonder what my hands like. And just strong blow. Don't have to press anything. Just blow. No, just blow, and then you'll feel like do 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 do. That's when you can pull it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. If only a woman came with instructions. Like yeah, that, exactly. Right? That's right. A good one, I'll tell you. There you go, blow. There you there go. go. That's it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Oh, look at that. Oh, one Give me another drink. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, not even a problem. I've had, um, was it three or four standard drinks I had? Three, I think. Or maybe two. No, no, it was more than two. Or three. There you go. There you go. We'll get, you know, have a crack. Yeah, you got to get grumpy on it. What about the half a bottle of scotch I drank before I numb? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're on. There we go. Once it finishes, yep. you know the deal. I am going to catch a cab out in one night. <clears throat> oh, I really get on it, you reckon? Oh, yeah. You're going to do yeah. lives still? Yeah, we'll do lives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just, you may need to edit. So this, guys, is we're making sure that everybody's okay to drive. This is not a legal thing, but it gives us an idea. There you go. What has he got? We have. Thinking about it, thinking. Ah, oh, 0.009. So I'm not 0.09, I'm 0.009. So I'm not going to do that. 0.009, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're well under. Oh, right, so I'm over. I'm more than you. You're more, yeah. yeah. You only had to and I'm more than the. Well, I'm over, I can't drive. There you go. There's the evidence. <laughs> See, proof. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. This will be interesting. Uh, Tougher than I Oh, you yeah. can't drive either. I would Bloody. never have driven anyway, but no. that's not anywhere near as bad as you thought I'd be. No, honestly, I thought you'd be more than that. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Crazy. Yeah. Look, if that had been our normal drinks, you would be, but that's only 29%. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's and right. Scotch, is, Scotch, those ones are usually 40. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Righto. Righto, guys. What well, did I pay for that? 100 and. It was bugger all. It was on specials. It was in the other something. video. Yeah, I was in last yeah. Man Cave Tuesday. Yeah, oh. anyway. Yeah, cool. Righto, fuck off to the Man Cave. Righty, hey, let's see what Nay is up to in the garden, because the garden is going off bloody crazy. Ah, oh, he's finished. Uh, whoop. <laughs> what? Just coming to show him your garden, boob. Look at that. That's a lime tree that, where that for years was just really struggling and this year it is just taken off. So I reckon he's he's out of the uh, the I'm going to die. He's out of the ICU. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. it, yeah. Yeah, so um, bloody mandarines. Oh, well, I, I, mandarin juice. I actually juiced them in the juicer. Yeah. Bloody brilliant. Uh, we got rid of those big bloody things that I just I got sick of cutting them back. The old crepe myrtle is just going off tap. Now he's got all wildflowers. Got all flowers here. Look at all my azaleas. My nana would be proud of me. 
We've been, or well, Nay's been doing the majority of it, but a lot of repotting of stuff. This was an old one from out the back. Some plants just don't, they don't like, it's finding their spot, isn't it? Yeah, and you can't read the tag and believe it. No. Because we've got some that say full sun and they don't like it, and some say part shade, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we've got bigger pots to repot some of the older ones, like this, this um, kumquat. It's just doing marvellous, but it was starting to get yellow so we repotted into a bigger pot and it's just loving life again only crazy all looking good boob slow and steady now if you're thinking oh bloody plants are a pain in the ass here's something try a strawberry so a strawberry is really good because you can eat something off it but they're really hardy so i had this pot plant here and this one these strawberries were actually given to me they got too big somewhere and they just cut them out dropped them off here and I've potted them and now these ones here is we did the same thing we pulled them out repotted and cut a whole heap off um, now they're all coming back again I've had that many strawberries off them yeah they're not the big bloody juicy ones that you get in the um, in the supermarket but they're bloody tasty so you can see I've now got that bloody strawberry plant there That strawberry plant there, that's our pear tree. That's had a lot of bugs, but Nay's right onto it, fixing that one up. Um, peaches, this year, look, we've got peaches coming. Still no uh, kiwi fruit, but over there we've got a male and a female kiwi fruit, so we might be doing good there. Now there was, I was just gonna, oh, she might have thrown them out. She might have bloody thrown them out. Oh, she's thrown out the... Really? That's bad. Let's see what she says for herself. The strawberries, the leftover strawberries that we just chucked in the pot, what'd you do with them? Oh, they're at the back. I couldn't find them. I reckon you threw them out. You're being very difficult. Obviously, passion fruit all through there. Brilliant. Oh, look out. Oh, I was looking for them in a pot. Right. So that's the strawberries. Now they've been out of the pot. There's no pot. They're still oh, growing. It's, it's still growing, just sitting there like that. Crazy. So the point I'm making is um, yeah, strawberries, really, really easy. So this year we've got uh, cucumbers. We've got all the, uh, that's red spinach and just leafy greens. Lettuce last year I did the proper iceberg ones, but what I found was um, a lot of them started getting all that, uh, the rot in them. Whereas this, I just come out, I just pick the outer leaves, chuck it in my sandwich or making a salad. That's capsicum. Now the Granny Smith apple, brilliant. That's a Johnny type one over there. And this, See, and that's been repotted. That's a fig. If I come around here, you will see, whoop, um, figs. Figs are coming up everywhere. So, I'm a bit excited that we might get a decent uh, lot of bloody uh, figs off that that you can eat, because the ones that I've had in the past couple of years, they've been a bit flowery. They're not 100% right. And we've got uh, chives. Uh, normal spinach and we've got two tomato plants so there you go and all the other stuff you know the lemons the grapefruit which is looks like a mandarin and tastes like an orange uh, we've got bloody berries yeah another mandarin over there oh but here's the special one so remember Pookie this is where we buried Pookie and that is the snowball um, tree and apparently she's loving this tree so there you go howdy little pooks right so now i want to show you the chain just an update of the chain and no lubing of the chain on the dr650 so come in here so if we remember we've got up here so chain and sprockets they were new on the 16th of the 5th 20 and it had done 27,300 so I know it's over three years that this chain and sprockets have been on 
and it's done over 10,000 kilometers on it. So no oiling except for the WD-40 after it's been washed, only when I wash it. But you look at that chain, that is still brand new. There is no, you know, and I obviously check for, you know, kinks and stuff like that, nothing. It's still perfectly fine. So there you go. Obviously we'll just keep going and um, see how many how many k's and time we get out of that chain without putting the bloody you know the sticky lube bloody bullshit all over it right oh eh? actually guys what i will tell you just quickly um if you've got old so these are quite well worn tires they're ne nearing the the end of their life i don't know if you can pick that up in the camera they look like bloody brand new ones now because i put some shit on it and that is those two bottles there. That is um, heavy duty rubber uh, cleaner. I've done it on the Jeep. I've bloody done it on that. So if you want to clean your tire, we'll talk about it another bloody time. But yeah, really good shit that actually. Um, another thing I've done is this bloody mounting thing where I have my tablet. I've removed the clamp, I've now got a hard one on there, so now this does not move this way or that way, but I still had that problem uh, of it going down. So this arm, see how you can bloody tighten that as much as you want, um, but it will on the bumps and stuff. What I've done, I don't know if you can see underneath there, I've just put a little thing so that this can only go so far, that's it. So I'm hoping this has solved my issue. Of course, you know me, I always want to do it my way, the DIY way, the cheap way. You know, I've been told <laughs> quite a few times different ways to do it, but I, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just a bit of a wacko. So uh, there you go, right -o. Um Here's another bloody thing I've been testing. Right now, guys, so now what I want to do is, um, I've been, obviously I've had these uh, two boots. So this is the former adventure boot. I've had these for years, love them, they're brilliant. I've also now had these boots, which are the Moto Dry Trekker Adventure boots. I've had them for, I don't know, probably more than six months. I have done all the types of bloody riding in these, the rugged, gnarly bullshit, hellish sand, I've walked through water, um, all the normal riding that I do. Look, what I want to, at the end of the day is that whichever boot you choose in this style of boot, so these are adventure ones, I don't want to get down the thing of, you know, people saying about the whole, you know, this bullshit and all that. It's it's your personal choice. But if you're looking at an adventure boot, I would highly recommend either of these. So what I've found, the difference between them is bugger all. The only difference from my point is that you'll see the former is, and I'll put you down there, that one there is a fatter look. Uh, more higher look, oh, well it actually is, on the outside. It makes no difference on the inside. So this one's a bit more, I don't know, it's smaller, thinner type of thing. But when you wear them, you, you don't feel that difference. It's only a visual look. But where it does play is that <clears throat> I have far less issues, if any, of changing gears when I use these uh, boots whereas I will have times where it's a little bit difficult getting it under because of that thickness and width of these boots that's the only problem I'd be happy to use any of these boots regardless of that little issue I do like the fatter look visual but I do like the slender from a functionality point of view so these you can get in that color or the black these you can only get it in uh, the brown color so there you go. Now, the other thing that I've been doing, and that is Jay Leno's bloody leather cleaner and the leather conditioner. Now, when it comes to boots and, you know, cleaning them, applying stuff to them, you know, when we're using our Blundstone bloody uh, boots and that, we used to always put the dubbin. Well, they say, and I think it's former that actually says, 
not to use a heavy, thick type of uh, moisturizer or cream or whatever on the boots because what can happen is it keeps the stitching wet for uh, extended periods of time and what it can actually do is rot the stitching and then you'll have bits and pieces coming apart and whatever. So, now some people say they used the, used the dubbing for years, never had a problem with their boots. Cool, no worries. But what I've been doing is I've been using these two. So one to clean, one to nourish the bloody leather or just look after it. Um, and I've done it on both of these boots. So these, these are clean, all good. I'm not having any, any problems with stitching or coming apart. Um, another thing, this jacket here. This is my old leather jacket. It's most probably more than 13 years old now. Um, and what uh, this thing... <laughs> This thing has been a lot of places. It's been soaking wet. I'll tell you what, when it rains and all you've got is this, this becomes a big, heavy weight of water. Um, so what I would get in certain spots, it, it, the leather would start to go all that white and cracked and all that kind of stuff. I've used lots of different leather products on this over the years, but for the last 12 months or more, I've been using this stuff and it does a good job it keeps it open I don't have all that scaly white bullshit it's keeping it nourished simple so let's let's clean up one of these boots we'll clean up that one no we'll clean up that one so what how I clean my boots depending if they're just dusty I'll just get a little bloody brush just dust off the majority of the crap. So there you go, that's been dusted. Now if I had mud or you know stuff on there, I'd be knocking as much as I could off outside. I'd get the, the hose and just try and rinse, get the bulk of the shit off. Then I just let them dry and then let me get a bloody towel so I don't wreck me nice new podcast table. So now what's going to happen is too, this comes, this you can buy this off at Jay Leno's as a kit. So it comes with those two things and this. We're giving away this to a lucky crew member. If you go to the website, you'll see it there. Just register as per usual guys and then we will give, the, give that pack away. So, that leather clean, and as you can see, you know, I'm bloody using this shit. All I do is just spray it over. So obviously, predominantly, Jay Leno, he has nice, you know, old cars, lots of leather seating and all that kind of st stuff. You know, all the fancy shit. Um, <clears throat> so I figure if it's gonna work on a Porsche Carrera or something like that, leather seats. It's not going to be a problem on MX boots. And it's really, I don't know how this stuff works, but like if I was to do this with water, it kind of like smudges and the dust. I don't know what it's doing. I, I, I don't understand where... The bloody dirt's going, but you can just see, I'll oh, put you down there. I don't know, it kind of like, it's like some Harry Potter stuff. It, it evaporates or bloody, I don't know, some bullshit. But really, you just, you, this is what I like is it's in no time at all, you know, hey presto, they're clean. Good as new. Then all I do is grab a bit of this uh, conditioner stuff there. Squeeze a bit of that on there, just like that. I don't know if this is the proper way to do it, but just whack it on. Squish it around. So, mate, obviously just making sure that you get it on all the, the leathery bits. You know, there's a bit of plastic, but I just smoosh it over. And there's one key spot 
on your adventure boots that you've got to pay particular, um, what do you call it, or put some focus on. Because what I've found is that a lot of these boots, the uh, from a waterproof point, uh, it's the fail point. And basically, that's that bit in here, that there. That will normally, because that's soft, it's supple, because um, it's got to crinkle up and form around you, that's where things will start to wear out. I've had them happen before. So always just make sure that you give that a good clean and get that leather bloody cream in there. And look, that's it really. I mean, look at that. That's a clean boot. That's ready for some adventure. Cool bananas, right, eh? So that's it. So that kit, that kit, including all this stuff, $59.95 on Jay Leno's Garage uh, Australia. There's the bloody link there. Remember, guys, if you buy anything off that website, use Biker Bits in the, uh, the checkout. You'll get 10% off. You can save some money, save some bloody money. Right, eh? Rightio, guys, so now it is time to give away that uh, RXT Safari helmet, the modular bloody one. I was supposed to do it down at uh, Essendon Motorcycles and Mowers. I've done it. Let's head down there now. G'day, Noel. How, how's it going, man? Yeah, good, Mark. How are you? Pretty good. All right, so we've got to get bloody give away this helmet. I was supposed to be down there, but we're just going to use technology and uh, do it this way. Yeah, I know. Um, You're a bit slack at times, but that's I okay. <laughs> so the Safari, this is the RXT Safari motorcycle bloody helmet. It's the modular thing. Sure is. Yep. So we've got, if, the black one's $189. Yep. 95. Yep. And the other ones are 100, the coloured ones are $199. Yep. So what we're giving away is whatever, whoever wins this, and we're going to come back to the Bike Bits HQ. I'll give it away, but this is the helmet that they're going to be winning. They can choose whatever colour and whatever size they want. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. That's it, man. No worries. That's all I needed. I'll, uh, everybody else, we're coming back to the HQ. All right, mate. See you yes. soon. Bye. Bye. Big thank you to Essendon Motorcycles and Mowers and Noel for bloody doing that and um, and Nev for filming it too. <laughs> They're bloody looking after me. Right, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to do it this time. I don't normally do it. I used to do it all the time, not that. There it is. Okay, so if you, you can't see that, hang on. So this is the uh, random generator. I stopped doing it because it just takes so much time, but I just do it this time. Right, hey guys, so you should see that there's 120 entrance, the RXT Safari helmet by, uh, given to us by Essendon Motorcycles and Mowers. Now, Andrew Sharp, no, you're not the bloody, well, it says the entry. This is going to be the winner. Now, I normally do lucky number seven, don't I? I'll have to do that, but I'm just going to quickly click. So these are all, I'm just clicking this randomly. It's weighted because depending on what level you are, you have a weight, weighting one. That was the horse bloody apocalypse dude. Um, right, so I'm just going to stop now and I'm going to click seven times on the seventh one. That's going to be the winner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keith Andrews. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Keith. You are the winner of the bloody helmet. I just had a quick look on the on the member site. So Western Australia, you're in Western Australia. Um, brilliant. So. What I'll do is get you to uh, jump on the crew site, go to your account page, you'll see my mobile address there. Give me a ring and we'll get all the details. I've got all your address and all that kind of stuff, but uh, what what particular helmet size and colour, and then uh, Essendon Motorcycles and Mowers will send that out to you. Brilliant, bloody, there you go, righto, get out of here. Well, there you go, guys, that is Man Cave Tuesday, done and dusted. Hope you all enjoyed it. Now, for the crewies, uh, don't forget, if you're looking for a ride, check out the website. It's in there. Um, it's this weekend. Remember, the referendum vote is on, so you'll either need to do an early one, which you just look online and they'll show you where you can do it. Um, anyway, there you go. 
And for the people that haven't seen the podcast, don't forget there are two of the routes, new routes on the website. Um, there's also a video, a crew only video, just showing you how I set up for the bloody podcast and shit like that, but not the new, new setup that we have. <laughs> bloody podcasts. Righto, guys, remember, keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.